I found cause to worry about young men. Most young men are single. Most young women are not. The normal way, actually, that people start relationships in the vast majority of cultures is to be like, is like semi-arranged marriage, right? Like not the full, you've never met this person before, you know, 13 year olds, whatever, getting betrothed, like not like that, but the sort of you're introduced by family members, mutual friends, you're known in the community, you go to church, whatever it is. And then you're, both of your families like consent to the marriage and it works out okay. But the, but the, the expectation isn't like, the expectation of marriage up until relatively recently huh. and actually I don't think I don't think husbands and wives used to talk to each other as much as they do now. I think people used to have much more homosocial kind of lives. Mm -hmm. You'd hang out with other men, you'd hang out with other women. You wouldn't necessarily hang out a lot with the opposite sex, including your spouse. Um, so this idea that like the going up to a person in the bar is like the normal and natural way of stuff accurate. You might be wondering why on earth is a 30 minute countdown before the show starts. The show starts 5 p.m. West African time on Tuesday. So the whole essence of this 30 minute countdown is to allow people who are subscribed for the show, for the live stream, to join us. What you can do right now is call your friends, your families, gather together in the chats as we count down to the live stream. 5 p.m. Tuesdays, West African time is when the show starts. Okay, so make sure you subscribe. You click the like button. You click the bell so that you get notified as soon as we start. So we'll start in a couple of minutes. All right, I'm looking forward to seeing you then. There's a presumption that you should get married. And if you don't get married, there's something wrong with you. If you've got a girlfriend and you've been with her for five years and you say to someone, we're getting married, they go, oh, that's great. You know, they don't go, why? You're happy. Why would you get married? Like everything's going fine. Why would you put yourself through that? Why would you run that risk? If you say to someone, we've been together five years and we've decided we're not going to get married. We're going to move in together, but we're not going to get married. Ooh, what's wrong? You have intimacy issues? What's your problem? But meanwhile, 56% end in divorce. It's, it's literally fits the legal definition of negligence. Marriage is an inherently negligent activity. It's like owning a lion. I've been doing this for over 20 years and I, I still get misty eyed at weddings. Like I still really, there's something in me that goes like, you know, maybe it'll work out for these two. You still believe like, it's in love. Sweet. I absolutely believe in love. I think love is wonderful. The, but love and marriage have very little to do with each other. I don't think there's much of a correlation there. I, I, and I think that's where we got off track. I don't think I can learn everything I need to know about myself from self. I, I think having someone around me who sees my blind spots, and that, that doesn't have to be a romantic partner. That could be a friend. That could be any number of things. But. There is something wonderful about romantic connection. We know that. I mean, the other statistic is 56% of marriages end in divorce, but 84% of people who get divorced are remarried within five years of their divorce. Really? 
Just think about that. So now you've, now you've done it and failed and felt the pain of the loss and within five years, 84% are remarried. Listen, you, you wanna test that theory. The next time you're out with a couple who've been together for a while and it like seems like they maybe got in a fight or they're just like kind of being you know impatient with each other at the table, you know, when you go like a group thing, just say to them, so tell me about how you met. Tell me, tell me the story of how you met and everything on them changes. At, like they go back to that place. I, I have this fantasy that if I could be invisible, I, I have about eight clients that I'd like to sneak into their house and their wedding album. Like I know it's in the attic somewhere or something. Because I would love to see what it looked like when these people loved each other. Because they are weaponized against each other now and we are trying to kill each other and we're taking every secret, every intimacy, you, you, you everything and we're just- at, we're, their, at their ugliest. At their ugliest, at their worst. At some point you were like, there's 7.3 billion people in the world and you're the one. Like you're the one I just want to be with and smell and touch and like that, 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 that feeling, we all know that feeling of like just the electricity of another person, you know? And, and tying that to the technology of marriage to me makes almost no sense whatsoever. And I actually think it's almost antagonistic because there's so much expectation that comes with marriage culturally. We've created so much stuff around it. Like when you marry someone, they're supposed to be, at least in the modern Western model, your best friend, best roommate, best co-parent, best travel partner, best uh, roommate, best everything, best activity partner. Like how, how would one person be all of those things? That's insane. Like whoever came up with the word soulmate, really we should be paying, like divorce lawyers should be paying that person dividends. Because we've convinced people that if this person isn't meeting every one of your needs, checking all of these boxes, they're not your soulmate. You, your, your soulmate would know exactly what to do, exactly what to say at exactly the right time. I had a guy, am um, I supposed to mention him? Okay, he was sweet mm. to the core. Um, that time, eh, I feel like, in fact, make um, I just marry him. <laughs> he had money, everything was all right. I, they gave birth to me. I uh, was born with a silver spoon, but with condition, make crayfish bend and everything flopped after my daddy died. So it was not easy for me going to school. My mom had a petty business, made me do things that I was not meant to do. And in the process, things happened. He came up as a friend. He came up and I, I felt that they were just the same thing. He was sweet, past mark, yes, checking everything. He wants my progress. Everything was just right. Honestly, I'm still regretting because the wife he got married to, in fact. You're better than that. Yes, I am far, far better than oh, that. I do you know. <laughs> well, it's your judgment, though. It's exactly. not, it's not. The wife really. might not see the same way. Well, do you, no, the wife will be I still, he would still talk. Like, we mm. talk like, you, you know, like, like friends. We are friends. Of course, he can't tell you that your wife is better no, than No, no, no. See, you. let me tell you something. With the relationship we have gone so far, eh? She opens he, up he to opens you. Up. I regret it because I was the one that messed up. Yeah, yes, I messed yeah. up. I just had to like call it off and I do think that pushed him because I wanted to be free. I felt at that time he was stalking me. Wanted to know what was I was going, like doing, every corner. My mom too, even. My mom was, you know, call him today. He cried, dude. Ah, we just told me that happened recently. If I remember that thing, mm. I feel bad. Mm. Like, so pained because where I should be standing right now another with person. me, another person is there. Hey everyone, as a reminder, the show will start in a couple of minutes time. It's 5 p.m. West African time on Tuesdays that we run the live stream. You get an opportunity to talk, to call in and talk to us. The link to call into the show with your video will be in the video chat. So just ensure you hang out in the video chat, chat with people, get to meet new people, and we'll see you in a couple of minutes.
Okay, so what are the top signs of a catfish? Yeah, the biggest one, of course, is that they're going to ask for money. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that might, may seem kind of obvious to some people, but you gotta remember that these relationships oftentimes are accelerated really quickly. People are love bombing. Mm -hmm. And so then people are feeling like they are really engaged with this person and invested in that relationship. You know, and another thing is, that the person just is never available to actually meet or see in a video. They're always just messaging, so that's a big sign to look out for as well. Okay, what are some other ways that you can check to make sure the person that you're actually talking to is who they say they are? Yeah, I always love Google reverse image <laughs> search, so mm -hmm. I recommend doing that, of course, as well as get them on a video chat or meet mm -hmm. them in person as soon as you can. You can just, it's easy to do just a FaceTime or a Zoom date up front. Mm -hmm. so that way you know you're actually talking to a legitimate person. And then also do your diligence. Look them up on social media. Mm -hmm. Not that a little deep dive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not at all. Of course. All right, how can you protect yourself from being catfished? Yeah, well, of course, never send money to anyone. Right. But also do your research on people. And, you know, if somebody seems too good to be true, well, you know, it probably is. So it's important to, you know, look them up on the different sites. And then also make sure you're meeting people through legitimate means, mm -hmm. not just on some kind of, you know, weird <laughs> website. Right. There's some that are better than others and they ask people to even upload their IDs and stuff. So that can be good. Okay, so if someone suspects or thinks that they are talking to a catfisher, what would you suggest that they actually do? Well, right away you need to block them and then um, report them through whatever site that you've met them on. You can um, bring it up to them so they aren't able to do it to other people. And then if you have been scammed financially, make sure you report it to the authorities. Now you may be thinking that 30 is actually a better time to settle down than 20 or even 25. And I agree with you. But grabbing whoever you're living with or sleeping with when everyone on Facebook starts walking down the aisle is not progress. The best time to work on your marriage is before you have one. And that means being as intentional with love as you are with work. Picking your family is about consciously choosing who and what you want, rather than just making it work or killing time with whoever happens to be choosing you. Like dating people in the UK here is very different from dating in Nigeria. People do not randomly walk up to you on the street and be like, hey, hey, oh, you look good, like, and then start talking to you. You know those things we do in Nigeria? They don't do it here because apparently it is creepy. People find it creepy. Um, so for the past six months that I've been here, nobody, and I repeat, nobody has walked up to me to, you know, talk to me or chike me, like we say, like to ask me out, to toast me like bread. Nobody has done that here in the UK, like randomly. It doesn't happen. <laughs> so a few weeks back, my flatmate, she is from Zimbabwe. And she was like, Chidera, since you've been here, has anybody ever asked you out? Like she was legit worried. She was like, because I think I'm not as attractive as I used to be. And I'm like, no, it's just the way it is here. People do not ask people out on the streets the way we do it in Africa or in Nigeria precisely. So my friends told me that here, if you want to meet people, you've got to go online. You got to use the dating apps in it. You got to use Tinder. You got to use Hinge. You got to use Bumble or the dating app. You got boxes everywhere. And the rule is, the boxes don't touch. <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's talk about life. Let's talk about food. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about me. Let's talk about God. Let's talk about it. Ooh, let's talk about it. Oh. This is my ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend. So, I think three months ago, I told him that I was pregnant, that I'm pregnant. So he told me that he, do, he does not want it, that we should try to abort or this. And me, I don't want to abort. So I told him that I can't abort the baby. So it was like, then if I cannot abort it, then I should sort myself. That went by. Then, few weeks ago i called him 
So it felt I had about the pregnancy, or probably I was not pregnant, but I was trying to make it up or prank him. I called him that. So um I'm still pregnant though. So what do we do about it? It's like send me your account number. I said for what? He said, How much do you need? I'm like, I don't understand. For what? It's like eh the one that used to remove it like we are getting rid of it and i'm like no i told you that i'm not i'm not changing my mind on this one i can't I can't about it so i told my mom that i'm pregnant well i i didn't expect that kind of reaction from her i thought maybe she and my dad maybe they would see her she pack my things i leave the house or something but did not even they didn't take it too far they just accepted it like that so my mom now said that i should go and like he's staying he stays in our neighborhood and his family too they are staying in our neighborhood and there's somebody his mom is someone that my dad knows very well so my mom went to go and meet his mom to tell him that and this 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 so your son has impregnated my daughter so the mom said okay no problem that um anything that when will i start at nanta this 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 so she called him it was like he knows me but he's not when i impregnated me that i'm his girlfriend like more like girlfriend but we are not together again so <laughs> The pregnancy is not ease. So I called my elder brother and I explained things to him. My elder brother was like, if he wants it, then it's fine. But if he doesn't want it, it's also fine. But he should not come back to come and claim any child that is not his. So far he's saying the baby is not his own. So he called me last week. He told me that I'm playing a prank on him that i know the baby is not his and i'm trying to impose another man's child on him and i told him that if you wait for the baby to be out they will conduct the dna test he said cannot wait for it that dna cannot wait for dna dna used to lie so he cannot wait for dna (laughs) (laughs) he said dna used to lie and he does not trust me does not know what i'm doing behind his back because he's currently in the lorry and I'm in Lagos. So he said, he does not know what me I'm doing behind his back. I mean, I can connect with doctor and they will just present as if it's an Hollywood movie. <laughs> but it's, it's fair, <laughs> I did not see anything after then. I did not try to convince him. I just told him that once the baby is out, she come and get a DNA. And he said, he does not even want it. Like, I should not even... I should not even call him. I should not tell him whether I has. I should not even bring it up. I should not tell his family anything. Like, if I want to have the child, I should just know that I'm having this child for myself. The person that impregnated me is between me and the person. So I should just forget about him. Like, omit him out of the baby life. That's my story. Hey everyone, as a reminder, the show will start in a couple of minutes time. It's 5 p.m. West African time on Tuesdays that we run the live stream. You get an opportunity to talk, to call in and talk to us. The link to call into the show with your video will be in the video chat. So just ensure you hang out in the video chat. Chat with people, get to meet new people, and we'll see you in a couple of minutes. I know sometimes life can get fuzzy And the future so blurry. The concept of love still exists. There's still... If there are still a lot of people who love you, even if you can't provide everything. And they're ready to support you and be there for you any day, any time. There's nothing universal when it comes to relationship. Mm. It might work for you, it might not work for you. Yeah. You understand? So it's, it differs, you know. But basically, uh, any marriage or relationship issue is based on emotional safety and, af- and financial security. They go hand in hand. Now, there are cases whereby you could love somebody your partner love like a woman loves you so much you don't have so much money and she loves you day afternoon night and she's there for you and we've seen situations whereby 
she loves you. She does everything for you, even if you can't provide for her. But she has a side guy on the, on the other hand, which <laughs> provides it for her. Exactly. It might not be a sugar daddy, it might be just your a young guy, but he's providing the finances. He loves you, she loves you genuinely, no issues. But she's having somebody who is supporting her financially. And, and she's using that money to support you. But if today she wants to get married, she'll still get married to her partner. You understand? And you know, the funny thing about women is that they never know what they want. We don't know. That's, yes. that's the problem. Now, hmm. you see, you I've, I found out that, you know, in my little experience with young ladies, you find out that they'll tell you that, okay, Mr. A, I love him so much. <laughs> but he's not, yes. a fun, he's not a fun guy. He's not a fun guy. I like him, but all he's indoors, we just talk, talk, talk. But Mr. B, I like going out with him because it's fun to be with. Then you like, ah. <laughs> you <laughs> love Mr. A. I love the he's somebody that you can get married to. He's quiet, he's responsible. But he's not, he doesn't have that spice of ginger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, take me out all the time, go to club, do crazy stuff, be adventurous. He doesn't have it. He's too. You know, it's a book Go it's to the serious, office, yeah. come back. You know, what do you need? Talk about life and that's all. But you also want that spice of craziness sometimes. So, you know that there's a Mr. B. No, you're not dating him, but he's my friend. Anytime he calls me, I want to go out with him. So, you're like, you're confused. Yeah, because confused. if you end up getting married to your Mr. Right, at the point in your relationship or in the marriage, you might get bored and get yeah. tired of it. That's true. So, what happens? Because... You, you hardly find a guy or a woman, or let's talk about guys, that is total package. Mm-hmm. You hardly mm-hmm. find it. And even what I used to tell people is that, okay, a guy might start out as a, a fun guy in his early days. But at some point, serious. due to exposure, mm-hmm. due to new friends he's meeting, he might turn to that boring guy. Because a young man who is hustling, for instance, you know, is, is in his 20s, is hustling, gets married to you, you go clubbing all the time and regularly. He gets to his mid thirties, going to forties. He meets these new guys, new business partners, who change his orientation from clubbing to let's go to the adult club, for instance. You know, like where you meet the business tycoons, not the young club that where you dance all night, mm. but you know the adult club. You play lawn tennis, you play some recreational stuff, and you sit down together and have some, you know, discussions till midnight. Now his orientation is changing. Now, he doesn't take you to the regular clubs anymore. Rather, he's telling you that, oh, I'm going to meet my friends at the club and they want to have a discussion. Now he's traveling frequently. And now you now look at him that it's changing because it's getting boring. So let me tell you the angle I'm coming from now. Okay? These questions, I'm asking these questions particularly because I wish well for, I wish well for the women in my life. I wish well for the women that come on this podcast. Okay? So I am coming at this from um, from the background of healthcare. Okay, it, it is known that the best time for women to have children, if you really want to have children, the best time for you to have children, all right, is from the ages of 18 to you push it at worst, 32, 35 at worst. It's the best time for women to have children. Okay, and there's a reason for that. All the children that you will have, all right, you will have you will have been born with the means to have them when you are born. So usually, most women are born by the time you are born and you reach the age of your you start having your menses. You usually have about between three hundred thousand to four hundred thousand eggs. Okay, I'm talking. I'm a doctor, so I'm telling you, it's not. I'm, this is not theory now. You have between three hundred to four hundred thousand eggs. Okay. And every single month, all right, every single month, you you shed about a thousand and twenty-one of them. Roughly a thousand of those eggs, immature eggs, they are released. They don't they don't make it to the race. By the time your menses is starting on a monthly basis, twenty of those eggs start to mature, and then one, usually one egg, is ready for fertilization. So if you have sex around your the time your that egg is released, the person gets pregnant. Whether you get pregnant or you don't get pregnant, at the end of a year, usually, you would have used up 12,000 eggs. Okay? So most women who start their menses, from the time they start their menses to the time in which they stop, they stop, um, 
ovulating really they have roughly about like 25 years do you understand me so women who start their menses early maybe like around the age of 8 10 12 usually by the time they are reaching the age of 35 37 they are near the end it doesn't mean that they can't get pregnant it just means that it becomes a bit harder and it doesn't mean that you won't have some people who at the age of 40 41 42 they will not get pregnant easily but it means that if you take most women around the age of 37 to 40 they find it difficult and i see these people i've had people who have walked into my consulting room which i'm talking to and they have been they are struggling to have children and they can't get pregnant and there's nothing as painful in this world for women particularly if you want that you wanting to have children you can't have it do you understand me so that's one the second thing also is that we also know that it is best for people to have children growing up in a house with a man and a woman all right people children who are born into single mother houses all right they usually don't perform as well as people who are born into houses where they have two parents okay so if we're having this conversation if you add the two together it means that for most women all right it's important for them to prioritize if you want to have children it's important for you if you want to have children and you want children to turn out well it's important for you to prioritize having those children on time it's important for you to prioritize getting married and we hear a lot i i can't remember people women who i meet almost there was a particular woman there was a particular lady who i who i attended to she was shedding tears she had tried so many things she had tried ivf ivf cost millions eventually when she tried ivf and did not take she tried like four times as at the time she was doing IVF, a particular cycle of IVF was costing, at that time it was costing about close to between 2.5 to 3 million. When she could not get pregnant with IVF, she, she reached, she was nearing 40. And she said that some of the eggs that they harvested, if she had known then, she would have tried using a surrogate. Surrogacy is also expensive. Those are problems the person would not have had if she had prioritized having children early. Do you understand me? So we're not having this podcast because fine we're cracking jokes and all that you talk about the issues you face and all that but somewhere at the end of somewhere in your life all right there's expectation that you're supposed to have children if you want to have children it's best you have them in time it's best you have them with a husband do you get me you guys don't like the way i'm, I'm you're looking at me as if this person just you've been laughing and then i just it's like we just enter an elevator and then i just farted in the elevator and closed the door <laughs> okay so that's the reason why we're having this call so if you want to if you really if i had to advise anybody if i have a younger sister who is by the time she's reaching the age of 20 she actually should focus on the things she needs to have to start a family and that means that one would have to be a bit much intentional unfortunately the things which we are saying if you go on social media you won't hear these kind of things on social media the kind of things you hear is people telling you that go girl um more power to you get <laughs> get the bag get your money you are the queen get make your bag. money collect your money and all that you always get um you can always have children later a large amount of people nowadays in their 30s women particularly are finding it difficult having kids it, it, they are larger than normal it's the reason why most of our ancestors then when people were getting to the age of 18 once women start getting the age of 18 they will prefer for them to get married because they understand that the older you get, the harder it becomes. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yeah. You may not like my conversation or the tone, okay? But take it as if it's coming from a brother, okay? So we'll go back right now. So I would ask that question again. Not what do you need to get pregnant? Not what do you need to get? Not what do you need to have children? What do you need to start a family? A family? yes everybody it's good to have you guys here it's good to have you guys here in the studio my name is Adi Falami and today I have Juliet here okay and today we will be talking about could you quit your day job become an influencer we have a lot of people in the 
Um, Anthony, if you're Anthony, Anthony, we can see you. You can't listen to YouTube and at the same time on your on your device. Okay, it's, your your audio is going to feed back in. So my name is Ade Folami Agumbi Ade. Um, I'm a physician, and right now I'm also like a life coach and all that. And today we will be talking about should you quit your day job to become an influencer? It's a dark show. It's a show that helps you get things started, start new careers, start new families, and figure out the way the world works. It's a very very practical show, and we have lots of people in the audience waiting to come on. We want to have like wonderful conversations with you. I also want to have a conversation with you because for the past two years, more or less hosting this show, I wouldn't really call myself an influencer. Would you come? I'm not really an influencer, am I? I'm the host of the show, kind of. And we want to share exactly some of the experiences that we've, we've had, some of the... Some conversation, because it's one of the questions that comes when people come on the show. I tell what done, usually, okay, so this is the way it works. Um, for those of you who have never been live in our view, we have like physical shows that we record that people join up. At the end of the physical show, people always ask this question. This is the question they ask. It's this question. Should you quit your day job to become an influencer? We have a couple of, I have with me the fantastic, pretty, the beautiful video. Okay, what's good now? Okay, I'm waiting Okay, so the talk, the quick thoughts on it. If you reset the show and all, people put their big on. Um, well, I would say personally, I would prefer influencing being a side hustle, like not a full time job thing, because you know, being an influencer, you have to do a lot of hard work. People don't see that part, but. It takes a lot of hard work. You have to go places, think about content, to, you know, to create. So, and you have to like, for me, I prefer that because I'll have something doing like a, an actual job and then influencing as a side hustle. Okay, so, so we have a couple of things we're gonna cycle through. Um, it's it's the knowledge economy right now. You know, if, unless you are living under a rock, you probably would have, you would have seen people, you hear of people who have um, millions of followers on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram. The particular news, the major reason why we're having this conversation is because um, the particular news went viral over the course of the weekend. It was said that secondary school students in boarding houses were largely, were not paying attention in, in, in classes anymore. Most of them smuggled and um, and mobile devices into the school. I guess what they were doing? TikToking. TikToking, exactly. <laughs> so people were TikToking classes, they were TikToking dances, and it, it, it sort of it sort of more or less became like a distraction. And so on today's show, one of the things we want to do on today's show is we want to unpack it, really. Okay? We want to unpack what the chances are of success on social media. And we're unpacking it because in a sense there's like a social media component to what we do. What we do. Juliet is with me today because Juliet, for those people who have been on our physical show, Juliet, basically you're responsible for guest logistics. Guest logistics and interfacing with people. And so she's going to talk about, we'll talk a bit about the, a bit of the hard work and all that. But let's just start out. A couple of things you would want to keep in mind. Um, let's assume, let's assume that you want to start out uh, you want to quit your job. A couple of things you have to keep in mind. A couple of things you have to keep. And we're going to cycle through that during the course of the show. Right. So the very, very first thing. The very, very first thing is people will tell you that you need to consider a side hustle as an influencer. I'm not an influencer, right? I'm a day-to-day -day person um, using the tools of social media. But of every single person that we spoke to on the interview, they will tell you that you have to have, you have to consider it as a side hustle. You will be surprised that most people that you see, I think this particular guy, what was the name of this guy? Um, the guy that was in the Navy. There was a particular guy who was in the Navy that he was very, very big on social media. And most people did not realize that he was, in the Navy. He was working in the Navy, earning his salary in the Navy for almost two, two, two three years until his senior colleagues at work started to notice that this uh, soldier, I think it was a sergeant or so that they were giving instructions to, they kept popping up on their feet and then they had to ask him to choose. So one has to consider that because one of the things most people don't realize is it's a full-time 
job. It's a full time job. job. Okay. Your own experiences with um, with guest connection and trying to interface with people and getting people to come on. Okay, well, it's it's really hard. Like it's a full time job too, because um, you have to like get this guest. You have to get this. People. Most of them I've not. I don't know them from anywhere. So I now have to like think of how to convince these people to like come for the show. And it's not really an easy thing. Sometimes we talk to like close to like 200, 300 of these folks. But when it's the day of the show, you just see some start canceling and stuff like that. So those things just like we're on down, but we still continue doing it. It's not easy. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do a quick one. Um we're gonna do a quick one. We'll quickly add we will. All right, so we we have we actually have like a little presentation that will walk you guys through. So you want to quit your job to go on in up. We can see lots of people in the comment section. We see that you are waiting. You want to come on the show? Fantastic. We'll bring you on. We'll talk about your experiences. We'll listen to you. We'll, we'll ask questions um, about where you are in your journey right now. But for this particular moment, we have a quick, like a quick presentation. We just quickly cycle through. So the very very first. The first thing, um, we tell you that you won't quit your job to become an employee, but a couple of things you need to know. First thing is that you, you have to consider a side hustle as an influencer first. And the reason why is this because most people already have social media accounts. It's nowadays, it's how many social media accounts do you have? I have like three to four, yeah. There's Facebook, I mean, there's TikTok, Instagram. So they're just there. And then sometimes uh, you probably will to find out that. You, see, you keep seeing like the same type of faces. Who, who are the guys? Who are the regular guys that pop up on on, on, on Instagram t- for you? On Instagram, okay, Kylie Jenner, Kylie Jenner, Popu Speedy, because I follow them. So these same people, I still find them on TikTok. So they're just like popping on the FYP. Okay, so I will tell you, I will tell you that from the very, very first, there are lots of people who, in the very, very first one year, that they're running social media account. They probably may not, the total aggregated amount of revenue that they generate may not run into 5,000 naira. For the first? For the first, first one year. First one year. What's been your own experience? You've been on TikTok? Maybe? Yes, I've been on TikTok, but it's like, <laughs> I don't make you more detail. So. Okay, so. Like we, like we mentioned much earlier in the show, um, you may want to consider, once you start making money, you have to consider it as a side of business. You can supplement your current job income. Okay, even, if, even if most of what the things you do would be like collaborating and following major brands. I'll tell you a couple of things, like now the particular experience. When we're running the very, very, when we're running the physical show, we had about, that was about a year ago, we had, um, we had a couple of videos, a few videos about travel and a few videos about um, a few videos of quality. Some of those videos went viral. And after those videos went viral, the um, marketing managers of like a couple of brands reached out. And we ended up getting into a series of meetings for collaborations and all that. And then at a particular point in time, at a particular point in time, there were metrics, there were milestones, there were deliverables. And the arc of the organization, at least the media arm of what we do, couldn't meet up with those deliverables. So, a lot of time it's literally not enough for people to like survive or sleep okay so that's the first the first step is you consider side also as an influencer first. the second step is what you, you need you need yeah what, what, what do you mean by niche okay this thing is like you will focus on one part okay if, if this area you want to be like um, a dancer that should be of main focus. You choose one and just be like a master of that part. And a lot of times, the key challenge you end up finding out, the key challenge you would have when you are niching is that if one of the edits you would have been niching is a lot of times the niche is not large enough. It's not as if it's, for example, um, as a side doctor, you sell food. Yes, I do. Okay, so, so tell us about. The, the need of shoes that you probably the need of shoes that you, you um into. sneakers and corporate work 
um, shoes. Do you sell fish fish shop? No, 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 no. Do I you create videos about food? Yeah, I create videos sometimes. About and them. what's the engagement like generally? Mm, you know, this the you know it's when I say it's there are a lot of people in this business for a engagement. Most of your prices, like I sell like I'm corporate shoes, but sneakers like four, five, like that. But that's just it. okay. So when you talk about me too, a lot of times, most of you would, and some of the things we are saying, these are like common pieces. What it means just means is that you pick a particular part of the market and then you just focus on that part of the market. In the case of our show. All right, this particular show focuses majorly on like three three areas. Yes, the dark portion, dating, dating show. Dating show is like romance. Romance, yes. We have the business where we go out to, to interview people. Interview people, people, yes. And then we have the career part. The career part. And that's the reason why we're hosting the show. And a lot of times it's really difficult. I will tell you this that before we got into this particular space, I didn't I, I didn't have appreciation for the amount of work that people who are content creators make because you just look at it you open your phone you tap on it you don't realize that there's like an entire almost an entire industry yeah behind, behind it. So it if you want to quit your day job and we are saying this particularly for because for those people who have come on the show who after the physical show you come and talk to us and you tell us that you want to like get on social media you're probably being treated badly at your place of work you don't like your current boss maybe your boss is an asshole and then you want to fire your boss and hire yourself, you may have to take it slow, okay? You might, you might, you might notice that there's probably something on content creation that nobody is paying attention to. But you, may, you have to also be certain that nobody is paying attention to you because there's nothing there. Okay. You understand? So we have that. We also talk about uniqueness. Um, I guess that kind of like speaks for itself. Um, what do you mean by uniqueness? All right, so a couple of people we see you. Brian, we see you in the chat. Uh, Under Larry Wajo, we see you. Janet, we see you. Um, Lois, we see you and all that. We'll, we'll bring you guys in much later for engagement. Let's just quickly cycle through this. Um, let's quickly cycle through this particular conversation. So a couple of things. So uniqueness, basically, if you, if you are right now, social media is saturated. Okay, if you go on social media, the problem is this. When you are trying to enter an industry and the industry you are trying to enter, almost everybody is jumping into it. Because of mobile phones and the funny which you see on TikTok, I, I, I remember when Osato was, Osato was talking to us about um, when we were planning, I think that was about two weeks back or a month back. He mentioned that she had somebody who she had a neighbor who was in the Yeah, room. I was always doing live on TikTok. I <laughs> um, tap, 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 tap on my screen. <laughs> Okay, I'll follow, follow, follow. Like follow, yeah, follow to follow, but moot, moot, and moot back. Okay, right, like that. So, once you see any industry that everybody in the street has entered, just know that there's already saturation. Okay, there's this belief that there's a lot of money to be made on social media, and lots of people kind of like are jumping. Yeah. Okay, you will see when you start when you are seeing old women in their middle seventies, almost, almost about climbing into the grave. They are jumping on social media. When you see market women who are doing this, there's a stuff we saw, Ghanaian market women mm. fighting wrestling. Ghanaian market, I'm talking about in their 50s and 60s. Or so fighting. They were, they were fighting. They were doing the normal, the wrestling, those uh, WWE. Okay, wrestling, wrestling. Yeah, yeah. WrestleMania and all that. So when you start seeing everybody jumping into an industry, it becomes saturated. It's extremely saturated. So you may also have to consider how exactly you make yourself unique. And then, how do you ensure you're authentic? Okay, so about this, for example, um, most people nowadays are smart. Most people know when if, if you are not if you are if you are if you are telling lies and all that, most people can tell when if you, you can tell people who are like being fake who are giving wrong yeah. advice because almost everybody has experience. So a lot of times, if you if you are not if you are not real about what it is that you are communicating, people will just eventually get bored and all that. And, to a very large extent, you have to get in people's lives. About the next one, engagement. You have to engage with people 
regularly. In our particular case, I think we, for the studio we had like almost two months, almost two years, we were doing like live physical shows. We built up like a bit of a following. Okay, we, know, we actually know quite a couple of people. For example, for some of the people who are in the chat, I, I'm looking at Lois in the chat right now. She's backstage. Okay, I can see Lois backstage. I can see Brill backstage. And so we have lots of people. And so you have to engage with people and get to know people beyond just the show itself. Can you talk about a couple of things we did by way of engagement, like much early this year? Oh, okay. We we went, there was this um, time we went for um, an event. So we engaged with um, old guests and took them, they volunteered and went with us to an event. So we were just together during those times. And, Okay, and then fi- finally, the last thing we'll talk on here is consistency. Okay, so if you want to keep people, if, if, if you're going to do this, most people have this idea that you know, you get social media, you work on it like a, a month, two months, or a year, and then you start seeing results or something. It's for the long run. Okay, so it's for the long run. While we're, while we're about to prepare for this show, one of the things we said is that it's almost as if becoming an influencer today is like becoming like a platform. Yeah, yeah. It's like if you basically you yeah, are going, going to engage with people, you will engage with people, and it has to be, you will see them on a full time basis. It's, and you have to be consistent about it. So, those are a couple of things you just keep in mind. Um, let's talk about how do people support themselves? Your own experience. How will people how, support themselves? On social media. On social media, yes. While they are preparing for just make sure well firstly just make sure you have something doing like backstage like a hobby you know where you're earning from because social media, um influencing is not like it's not something you just enter and you can start making it so in case you're hearing okay star a entered in three months they're already making millions that's not how it is. So just get that one out when you enter you have to be consistent like we just said earlier we said earlier it's be consistent you have to just keep creating content and it takes a while before anything starts coming up. Just make sure you have a backup. The couple of expenses that people have to keep in mind, uh, one of the expenses is that rent or mortgage. <laughs> well, mortgage does not really apply to most of us, most people in Africa. But if you are living alone, if you if you are not, and that's the reason why you find a lot of content creators tend to be, in Nigeria tend to be, Tend to be young people who are living in their family and they have like access yeah. to free internet and all that because you know, if you are at that stage in which you, you are either planning to set up have a family or you're in that stage in which you have to stand on your two feet and nobody you have no place to stay it's not unusual uh, for people to it's not unusual for a lot of people there was a news that went um, viral a couple of um, weeks ago i think it, it, it made it a job become a content creator and then you got a victory from my house because she couldn't pay the rent. Pay the rent. Cool. We have to think about that. You may not need all those things like your Netflix subscription, things like your Netflix. You don't necessarily need Netflix, but at least there's some things that have to be regular. regular. Okay. House rent, your electricity, electricity bill, bill, gas, yeah, right? and then food. Okay, so those are considerations that people have to then there are also other considerations as well one of the biggest considerations is expenses related to influencing itself for example for people who are live streaming on a regular basis you need to have data data high speed internet access for us on the show we actually have to get um i think starlink internet and yeah. all that now we have like fast high speed internet so mm-hmm. those are things that you also have to keep at the back of your mind and finally this is the very very final thing i promise you so that we can jump into the show and hear what your thoughts are the final thing is you have to be ready to work hard okay there's a lot of fake lifestyle on social media right? there's a lot of fake lifestyle we've gone for physical shows Let's, in fact, let me just look you guys in and, and, and be real with you. We've gone, we've gone for physical shows. We've gone for a lot of physical shows and we've met people who you consider like uh, celebrities and all that. And behind the scenes, you find out that these guys are what the life they portray in physical, in, on social media is completely different. different. Okay, I, I'll give a quick example. Like there was a guy who I met, and I, I, don't, I don't mean this to, I don't mean this to like castigate anyone, so I won't mention it. Very, very popular influence on social media. Someone who 
um, if I mention his name, you know him. Okay? And then he showed up. I met him, I met him in Lagos Island. Not that I met him, I saw him in Lagos Island. I saw him at a particular market in Lagos Island. And usually that, that, please don't ask me what I was doing at that market, but it was a market where they sell like thrift goods. Very, very all this for for better part of what you call the now select kind of like they don't be too akubi kind of a thing. And I saw the guy there. He was wearing like uh, glasses, the face yeah. mask or so. But at some particular point in time, somebody started telling him, and then the guy had to tell them that they should calm down and all that. A lot of people are living lavish lifestyles on social media, but in, in the real world, they are extremely frugal people. Okay, so we say that because so that you don't you don't feel that there's something wrong with your life. You don't feel that. Uh, you know that way, which you feel that uh, you're not living up to standard. Okay, so that's where we are right now. We haven't answered the question: Should you quit your day job? Okay, we have not answered that question. We've just stated a couple of considerations you have to keep in mind if you want to become an influencer. We don't see ourselves as influencers. We just happen to run a media production studio, and we have the opportunity. We have the equipment and all that at hand. But from what we have seen, for those people who have come for our physical shows. You have to keep these things in consideration. So we'll quickly cycle through them, okay, from one to ten, and then the very, very first thing is that you should consider. So we'll cycle through quickly. Consider a side of the insurance office. Get a day job. Okay? You have to work in a restaurant. You have to work waiting tables. You have to work as a teacher. Um, pick up whatever jobs are available. Consider a side of so. Second, you have to niche. Niche means that you pick a particular area and you stick to it. In our particular case, we pick victim career business and we stuck to that okay you have to like give a particular angle an angle that gives a bit of uniqueness you have to be authentic nobody wants to hear lies okay nobody wants to watch you don't have to pretend that you are larger or more expensive than you are you have to engage with people that means that beyond just turning on the camera you actually have to get involved in people and get to know what their issues are their problems get to talk to people have an idea of exactly what their lives their lives are behind the scene you have to do it consistently, all right? In this particular space, five years is a short time. Okay? I will say that because some people, five years is a very, very short time. It's very extremely, there are lots of people, if you see people on social media who are paid for making lots of money to do, what they are not telling you is that if most of them have been on social media for yeah. seven years, all right? You didn't see that part, okay? Um, you know how to support yourself until you make it. Okay, you have to cover your rent, your oral bills, your gas bills. Okay, and then finally, be ready to work hard. Okay? It's, it seems easy when you see that people doing it, but it's not a lot of hard work behind the scenes. So that's where we are with the show. Um, we have a couple of people. So there are a couple of things that we also have during the show. So I have to announce this right now. Um, for each show, for this particular show, for the most engaging person who comes on the show, there are prizes to be won, so we have five grand. The five is five thousand in naira, the local currency of Nigeria. Five thousand naira, okay. It's not uh, five thousand dollars. <laughs> now we don't get, we don't get sued. <laughs> we don't want anybody to drag us to court. We don't want anybody to to put it to us. Okay? <laughs> we don't want lawsuits. Then also, there's between ten to twenty gig worth of data. Okay, that's also available for for the most engaging person. So. We're going to open up the lines now. Um, we're going to open up the lines. If if you are, if there's anything we missed out in this particular conversation, uh, let's know. Just come in. I can see Brel. I can see Honda um, Olari Waju. Okay, so Brel, are you? Do you want to contribute to the conversation? Are you ready to come in? <clears throat> um, good evening. Um, good evening. Hey, bro. Good evening. Good to see you. Yes, okay, so um, about the 95 and being an influencer, you know, I was just saying no, because so, no, no, for me. Now, to start with, basically, I will come with uh, platform dependency. You see all the social media that come up. Let's take, for example, now you you, you are so close. I, I believe every, every influencer is so dependent on each and every of these social media platforms or apps. So you can see, for example, now TikTok now people use mostly TikTok to just drop. You see that the, there is this there is this um, 
scared that will come in and it looks like they are losing money or losing something out of it because every every influencer out there is dependent on each and every social media apps that you see now you understand so if if the app is not coming up maybe there is a maybe the app should shut down or maybe it's the policies is being adjusted it will also affect uh, the pocket of an influencer out there that's like one of it that's why i will not even go for i don't think i'm going for any influencing because it's even stressful I have to start this. There will be so much pressure now. Imagine I have to start, like, I have to start bringing up content, content to audience that don't even care about me. So what is the essence of of that? So it's, it's, it's very stressful when you're trying to please people that will not even, probably later I'll come and throw you or bash you. So it's of no okay, use so that you You're saying now that you prefer your day job to influencing. You don't see yourself ever going into influencing. You don't see yourself um, doing that. Okay. I don't like day job because if I even if okay now the funny thing is that about day job and things that you might you might not even do so much work but you, you like but you, are, you can earn monthly like there, there's a way not to even do so much work and there's this uh income security that you work or you know work at the end of the month you get yeah at the end of the month you get you like you are getting you feel me and on the other hand. You, you cannot just be sleeping and say you are doing influencing. Even if you want to do get ready with me, you want to do uh, on my, my own. Life. I do this first day. Uh-huh. You will just, even all those fake things, uh, sometimes you see people didn't buy you about themselves and you're like, oh, uh, this thing is very stressful because you have to keep up to all these things. On like 9 to 5, you might even outsmart, you might even want to outsmart the, your boss just not to make work so much. On you, you understand. And at the end of the month, a lot. So that's like the the, the most important thing. Ninety five that I would actually go for. But what about having it as a side of hustle? Yeah, as a side hustle, it's you know most of. Okay. I'm okay. hearing most of. Because most of these people, most of these content creators, these influencers, mm-hmm. they have real jobs. You get. But maybe they mm-hmm. maybe let's say for example their company wants to do this um get together or they have this particular conference it just is the opportunity to just create content and post you get so people some people mm-hmm. take it as a side hustle so are you saying even if you're not going to consider it as a side hustle you know there are bills to pay rent to cover and all that. for me personally yeah, it would be choking because if i i design a website like on my own and i'm working for a company that needs me to to meet up to a deadline and i'm still trying to do uh uh influencing on the other hand i'm joking like you know health is first so you cannot say because i'm trying to make money then i'm risking my mental health on that so i have to like pull myself first before i think of making extra extra yes yeah, so money is good though, but you need to have your mental health at the top before you can think of making money extra so it's to me, oh, I don't like too much stress and something, but I, I want to be comfortable. Okay, what, what would you now say about those ones that do it? Like, um, you know, there are some people they like dancing. You get they have actual jobs, they have targets, they have but they love dancing. So that's more five minutes, ten minutes, just to clinch you something, you know. Um, well, those one. ones that are doing, those ones that are doing it. Ah, maybe that they are they're nine to five might just be okay. Uh, Maybe nine to five might just be a uh, chicken republic, or they're just there and it's not really choking like that. But when I talk about no, let let's not even let's you let's move to nine to five. Now. So I don't see huh? that one as. What did you say? You said there is a way you can at, at smart uh, smart your boss, yeah. Okay, now now the thing is that you you have to prioritize prioritize your work like nine to five. Understand. So it's more like um what's that word again? Scale of preference. You have to prioritize the one that that like you have to have have a list of things that you can do which make which, which make work easy for you. Now if it, if it was bringing in jobs for you to do, you start with the ones that will not stress you the most. You understand? So I know of course there'll be so much pressure in nine to five. But in a way to a smart thing, you just have to just make it look like okay, you have to bring out the things that will not I don't know how to put it, but you just have to have a skill of preference to, to certain jobs that you want to do. You understand? So it's not just like you are under pressure 
but I don't think a boss wants to see you complain or see you feel like you're not doing anything. So you just have to have a list of things that you want to do first before the other. <clears throat> Okay, so you you are saying no influencing. You prefer your day job. Okay. No, no, no influencing, but side hustles. Side hustles is not in the bad shower. I, I have a couple of I have a couple of questions for you. All right, so I have a couple of questions for you, um, bro. Yes. Okay, is it that have you tried have you tried influencing before? Yes, have I have. You, okay, for how long? So let let's say what your experience was like. Just Right. So, I, I so I'll, I'll clarify. Okay, so I'll clarify a couple of things that we want. Okay, so have. Okay, the front one of the things we want to have here. What's your experience? What pushed you into it? So you're going to start out with, um, how you got into it, what you learned, what happened, what you learned, and why you exited. So let's just see if we can have that within like two three minutes. Okay. So, okay. So can I can I start? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so I, I used to have a podcast like this. And from the podcast, uh people would come in and I would make out uh, time to to advertise their listen, their, their business or something. But you know and not like you have to bring up episodes every week, every week, every week. The pressure was much on me as a team, pressure. I I, I don't know how to work under pressure, to be honest. So imagine I'm trying to bring up new episodes every every um, week, and on the other hand, and, and on the other hand, I'm also trying to please somebody else. So I'm trying to work nine to five. So when I started this whole journey, this influencing journey, because I was one, I was just for my own like it, it's more like a, a hobby, but at the same time, I'm still making little pain from it. But as uh, along the line, I felt that this thing was just uh, it was more like a pressure, and I was trying to maintain social presence. I was trying to keep it together, and that alone, with my nine to five, was kind of giving me the whole mental stress. Because trying to please people, trying to talk about a particular scenario, and on the other hand, you are working. So it's more like I have two hands, but I cannot make use, make use of them because it's looking too much on laptop and you're trying to please another person so i had to just stop i i, I even stopped like i'm not even doing anything on it for long because i could not like keep up with the pressure coming from um the influencing on uh, podcast and all that so that's why i stopped because of the pressure i could not just continue the pressure and also i had problem with the applications that i was using so i was using an application so it's always a question for me to pay sometimes i want to pay to upload Sometimes, sometimes you just discourage me, and I'm just like, oh, what's the, what's the essence? So I don't have to stick to something that will give me long-term security. Okay, so so your own experience, your own experience was the stress was, your experience was that the stress was too much, and because the yes. stress was too much, you gave and pressure. It. Yeah, I, I I had pressure to maintain like to maintain because that image was yeah. pressure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, be laughing. Uh, every week. Okay, so you are saying. Okay, you are saying. I was saying that every week, every week felt like pressure. Yeah, the, the, was it the pressure, or the fact that you had to be consistent on a weekly basis? Yes, exactly. That second part, mm-hmm. I had to be consistent on a weekly basis, and you know. You cannot drop, you cannot drop a snippet, and you're like saying that, hey guys, the next episode, blah blah blah, blah and nothing is coming out the following week. And just imagine, worst case, that following week that you're supposed to release, that following week supposed to release, you now have, you have like jobs you need to attend to, and you're telling me that. <laughs> so I have to just cut out part of my body to do that. So and since I was like the only one, although I had like co hosts, but. I, I was I was I was depressing just like at my own schedule at my own time or leisure I was doing this you understand I had the little microphone on Spotify and all that so I was one editing I was one okay bro your connection 
your connection is uh, bad. I think your connection has given up also. So we'll let's bring Lois in. Lois, you have a couple of comments in the chat. So we'll bring Okay, no, bro no, is no, back. No. Okay, bro, you're back. Yes. We we we, we lost we Okay, you're still frozen for a while, so we we'll had the um, Lois to the chat. Lois. Okay, Lois, we can't we can't hear you. Um yes, bro. We can we can so hear you. Anymore. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. I think there's an issue with your internet. Okay. Um all right, so uh bro 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 had bro had uh, interesting very very interesting what are your thoughts on let so before we bring in the next person what exactly are your I thoughts think on, on what he said where he got it wrong was waiting for like the next week before preparing the content it's not supposed to be so so that was why he, he was struggling between preparing um that is creating content and then finishing his own the main job i think he just got overwhelmed he had to just give up. Give up. Can you he hear? Do you, do you hear what she said? Do you hear what she said? Okay, bro. I think we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Put on your put on your microphone. Your mic is off. Okay. I said, did you hear what? Uh, yes, it's on. Did you hear what Julia said about the pressure? I don't know. I said I did not give up. I just suspended yeah. it too. Because usually, if if you want to like. This, these influencers we see, most of them, those contents they post, they don't wait to like a week or the dead like deadline before they make them. Some of them, they make, uh, they create contents like three days, four days prior to the day they, they are posting. So it's not until you, what happened to you? You're saying you had issues with, um, you have, you were thinking about topics for the next week and so, so you yes, just, yes. just doing everything. If it's like two days, you've done everything keep them you have stuff to upload later and you have people who assist you anyway so i don't see the, the, the challenge with uh, um, the challenge with that the challenge with that uh, i understand i understand exactly what brian is saying it's extremely it's, it's a, difficult it's a full-time job and i think that's one people I, I think that's one thing that i estimate a lot of those guys that you see who are a lot of those guys that you see who are like uh, like the major influencers the major influencers and all that they have like they have like huge production studios with production bodies behind them. We're talking about people. Some yes, people have yes. about like 20, 40, 50 members of staff working for a simple production. So it's not a job for one person. You have basically I understand what Bob is Basically, what what you're trying to do is, is you're trying to you're trying to compete with radio stations without having the production body <laughs> there and the staff that radio stations have. Am I right? Amazing. <laughs> no, no, don't, 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 don't put it like compete. So you're not okay. for real. But I have like nine it? episodes. Funny enough, though. like don't put like compete. So so nobody come for me. But I have like nine episodes. Funny enough, or ten. All right, so we'll keep you on. We'll keep you on. Uh, just just stay, just stay, just stay in the just stay on the right. um, just stay in the conversation and all that. You can meet you can meet your audio. We'll bring other people. We'll bring other people on so that we can talk to them. You okay, just stay on right now. Linda Olari Waju, we see you there. Ernest as well, we see you. Ernest, are you interested in joining this conversation? Um we want people, and the reason why the reason why I the reason why I really appreciate what Brent, because Brent has said a lot, and you don't understand how profound what he has said is Brent has practically said that working a night to job in many cases. Working a nine to five job in many cases there eh, is much more is less stressful than attempting to build your own personal career as an influencer, and that's not what most influencers will have, most influencers will have you believe. Okay. If you sit down and you watch, you hear you hear them say that say, well, um, I had a very very stressful day at work and all that, but and then once I got on social media, before I knew my career started taking off. But behind the scenes, these guys work hard. Okay. I think that takes us to our 10th point. Um, you have to be ready to work extremely hard. 
So we can see in the online watch, we can see in the charts. Um, Ernest, we also see you as well. All right? Do we bring you? Do you have any follow-up questions for Brother? By the way, let me let's 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 let's, let's ask him a couple of follow-up questions. The podcast that you are running then. Hello, the podcast you are running back then. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. Yeah, the podcast you are running back then. What was the um, what was the focus? What was like the the niche? The niche. Okay, the niche was on um society pressure, peer pressure, and uh, relationships. Okay, so you are talking about society pressure, peer pressure, pressure, and relationships. Yeah, the, are you uh, an, ex- you an expert? Are you an expert on relationships? Sir? So, like, it goes in two ways, okay. directly and indirectly. I do hear well, me. Listen. Yes, we like, can hear you. Well, it, goes, you just... it goes in two ways, directly and indirectly. Because I feel that for a person that, 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 uh, I will not say I'm an expert, but due to my experience, can you hear me? We can, we yes. can hear you. We're listening to you. Okay. I will not say I'm an expert, but I would only say that from my experience and from my friends' experience, because I, I I I like to listen to people and take attention to whatever they say and their details. I feel that there's some level of 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 relationships and some kind of thing I've been into that made me understand and made me had to go into the whole podcast thing and made a certain pressure, peer pressure and relationships more like a side thing for me because of how much I've gotten to understand people in both sides. So I will know that I'm an expert but due to my experience and my friend's experience too. Okay, so um we'll, we'll see keep you in on that. I, I would say and I don't want to appear like um, we are goading you on. I don't want to appear that we are pushing you on to... Um, I don't want to appear as if we are pushing you on to... to go back for more suffering. But I would say that if, if you've had... No, I'm fine. You're not ready to move back in. I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Olori Waju. Olori Waju, we see you in the chat. Hello. Olori Waju. Okay. Online right, Waju. We see in the chat. Can you hello? Okay, online right, Waju is alright, so we can't hear you. Okay, yes, yes. yes. So I asked you have you been following you've been following the hello, conversation, sir. right? Have you been, you've been following our conversation so far. I am as well. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me, sir? We can hear you, Olai Waju. Can you hear us? Okay, so I think I think your network is bad. Um, when your audio when when your audio is back on, let us know. Um, okay, so so what are, what exactly are we discussing? We're discussing in this particular. Should you quit your day job to become an influencer? And it's a very very important conversation. We're asking you all to come on, um, particularly people with experience. So. If you have experience, if you've had experience doing this, um, either you're running a social media account or you you've been on you you've, you've tried to forge a career on YouTube, TikTok, um, Twitter, Instagram, any of those social media platforms, we want to hear from your experiences. If you've attained some degree of success with it, let us know. If you've had a couple of failures and all that, also let us know. That, okay. Um, while we wait, let's just quickly go and read a couple of comments. Um, so Lois, yeah, Lois is saying here, can you read out uh, Lois's comments, please? It's on the screen here. Okay, going for influencing is a whole lot on its own. It takes a while to be stabilized in influencing aspects. Okay, Ennis is also saying that quit your nine to five Biko. Ennis, we don't understand exactly <laughs> what you mean by quit your nine to five Biko. Lois also follows up and. <laughs> Okay, I think I think Brel wants to respond to Ernest um, Ernest Otema because you laughed when you read that. What are your thoughts? Okay, 
He said, quit your nine to five, people. Okay, uh, you know that um, there's this that lockdown period. Eh? If you notice, for those that were at home, they were just spending their money soft. You understand? Okay. And those that are influencing, it wasn't really going well. So you can see the advantage of that. Whether you work or you don't work, you are getting paid. So put that nine to five at uh, on uh, um, at the back of your mind, even if you want to start doing influence. Because that's like very prior. Okay, so we'll, we'll still get we'll still get back to this. Um, Lois comes back and she says that considering it as a side hustle is actually a good thing, but then coping with leaving your workplace by five and then start doing your influencing is a whole lot of stress. Okay, we've heard Brel's part. We want to hear from other people. Okay, we can see you guys in the chat and all that. Join the conversation. We want to hear if you if you are currently working in nine to five and then once you close from work. You are trying to get maybe like a podcast on or you are trying to get a social media page running we want to hear what your experience is we're also going to share um, a couple of tips um back and forth tips all right um probably for those people who are about to fail and just something to ensure that you don't give up okay so we'll have that conversation all right Waju, we'll get back to you let's just quickly read through let's just ensure we've covered the um, Comments. I think we'll do we'll to cover it. Cover every comment. Okay. So Larry Wadju, are you ready to come on now? Okay, so we'll add Larry Wadju. It's not okay. So Larry Wadju is good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Yes. Good evening, everyone. So, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We're having a conversation. Okay, um... Can you bring your face into frame? Because okay, sir. Is it okay, sir? Yes, yes, it's okay. It's okay. So your thoughts? Have, have Have you tried, sir? Okay. Um. To me, I don't think. Anyway, it differs from that um question. I think. Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, let's just quickly get to it. I think that that goes to the art of what. Um... Okay, so let's quickly get into this. Um... If someone is trying to. Join. If someone is trying to join, then we'll. So let's let's quickly get into this. So one of the things that one of the things that Brian mentioned, um, which most people very very rarely understand what they expect is that you won't have as much time as you think you have okay you won't have as much time you think that you have okay you have to prepare yourself that you know what you're not gonna have you're gonna have less downtime okay because how many hours you want to guest a lot just and some other thing how many hours do you spend roughly on a day-to-day basis reaching out to guests reaching out to guests ah, from the beginning like eight to when we close i'm still because these guests when you send them reach out to them on whatsapp most times so most of them they are still at work before you get um, any reply from them it takes long there are some that will just leave your messages on red and they will ignore you like that so it takes like so it's roughly like it's roughly like how how, how long is it roughly six six hours six hours day to day yes day. just reaching out to guests to, yeah like, and you're not like it's not like you're responding to people on social media comments and the no, rest. No, no, just just guest selection. Just guest selection for the show. Okay, so that's one thing that people have to keep at the back of their mind. You may put in. <clears throat> it's in fact just even sitting down to research a show alone is a lot of work. People end up spending some point of spending many hours eh, trying to research. do that. Then if you manage to get like a huge following, let's assume you get a huge following on. Instagram, okay. What is what? What do you do? And that was what your brain was mentioning much earlier. That technology constantly <laughs> changes. Okay, so you end up finding out that you're on the platform. Some people are on that platform, and then the platform changes. Like there was a time that uh, Twitter was out and TikTok was out, eh? and all the people who had built a following on, t- on Twitter, um, Twitter and TikTok, eh? they went crazy. I remember there was a forty-hour period that 
Twitter went down and yeah, people, down. people were shouting, complaining, lamenting. And there's one thing which people very rarely mention, the headache of most people. I know what that headache is. If you get banned, then all, all your hard works. All your hard work is gone. <laughs> it's gone. Okay. I know it's you people get banned. A lot of times, like when people get banned on social media, one of the things you if you follow some creators, you just find that all the all you just for like the next two months afterwards, all the videos they are creating is about how they got banned. Yes. Right. So it, it can put a lot of stress and is anything else is anything we've left out in the show? Okay, just in case you are joining us for the first time, um, we run this show every every Tuesday it's like 5 p.m. West African time. Okay, there's a 5k cash prize and 20 gig data for the most engaging or 20 gig data for the most engaging guest. Okay, and today's conversation we're talking about um, should you quit your day job to become an influencer? Okay, currently right now as we're speaking, we're streaming on across three platforms. We're streaming on on YouTube on Rumble and on Instagram. Our goal, of, our goal is that over the course of the next um, couple of months, you know, that we'll, we'll stream on all social media platforms at the same time. We're not influencers, okay? We're media production people. We'll, we'll produce a show. As it turns out, we just use um, social media to distribute the content that we produce. Okay, we've had Brel and a couple of other people in the conversation and there are a couple of things. So just to bring you up, up to speed on where we are right now. So first, where we are right now is that you, we've, we've cycled through a couple of things. Uh, Brel in the audience has been telling us that it's not it's, it's not worth it quitting your day job for influencing. For well, others are saying otherwise, like on the comment in the comment section, mm-hmm. some people are saying you should quit your job. In which particular comment section? Um, I think one N S or something. Yeah, NS yeah. mentioned you should quit your job, but. But how, how can you, how can you just ask them to quit their job when they don't have anything? I think he's looking at them? it. It's not like to me is the way what he meant by that is I think if you should view all these influencers we have now they're already making it big. But nobody's talking about like nobody's talking about the backstage what's going on the number of um assistance they are getting. So maybe that's why he's saying she quits their job. Okay, Nda, we see you. But your internet, your internet is very, very terrible. So we're going to add you to the conversation again and see whether we can have. You can see. Okay, can you hear me now, sir? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. So. Um. Very, very well. um what? Uh, to me, anyway, it depends from person to person. It depends from person to person. But for me, I don't really think I will leave my page job for influencer. The reason that will probably make me do that is um, if I've been doing that, like, okay, let's say like a side of you. But coping with it is just the issue because it's going to, it's, um, being an influencer and it a lot of things. Uh, you, you need your time, you need your resources, you need, you need a lot of things. And it's just like a full-time job. So it's like oh, more or less like a full-time job. Although some people have these skills, if it's something that comes, it comes natural to some people, so people like the social and um, life and all that. So, so for some people, it's more like a hobby. But someone that is not that, uh, if it's not a hobby for you, uh, it will be very very difficult balancing the two of them, uh, balancing your work. Especially, uh, it now depends on the type of work you do in question. If it's the normal, if it's all those less stressful work, and then probably. But if it's the one that you have to work, you wake up by a.m. Um, maybe yeah. probably three, four. You close maybe by five, six. And you're working all through hours. I don't see how you're going to cope doing the influencing work. And another factor is this: influencing work. How sure are you that you are going to get your, um, you are going to make it on time? Because it takes time for you to build your followers, for you to build your views and all that. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. So he said probably you have been doing that um, before leaving the job, and you have gotten a stand or balance. To some extent that you know that okay as i am right now nothing can happen at least i'm sure that and um, i'm okay to some extent at least even though anything happens i cannot really and probably you can consider that or you have another um source of income 
that's the only reason I can say you can leave your job for influencing. Aside that, I don't really think it's worth it. Except um, probably it comes, it's something that comes natural to you. So people love it. Just like you talked about, you said you were talking about dancing. So people, they love it. They don't mind, they don't care. They can, that's it. But if it's not something natural for you, like, when I mean natural, something like it's be something that you can do without, you don't care if you are getting the money or not. Although there must be something else that will be balancing that, but some people can just do it for the fun of it. But if you know you cannot do it for the fun of it, you need the money urgently. I don't advise you leave your paid job for to do an influencer because it will be a big problem, a very, very big problem. Very, very big problem. All right, so uh, that, um, that's um, Olari Waju. Um, Okay, that's Olari Waju. Your thoughts are that I, I have I have I have a couple of questions for you. Have you tried Have you tried to build a following on social media? Um, not really. I not. I can't say I'm. I'm not really a media person. Not okay, so not really how, media how, person. how can you How can you speak to the difficulty of it if you've never if you haven't tried it at all? I have friends that do it. There's somebody who's, even though I am right now, I said that, yeah, there are a lot of people doing it behind you. So I've been doing it, and I've seen it. Enes is responding to you now. He says that you can't get very, very rich on salary. It's hard, though, to build your brand. There's a book called Why A Students Work for C Students. Enes says that salary work is more like a cage. Oh. But that doesn't mean you should quit your job and just focus okay. on it. Influencing your response to that. Then the main thing is okay, salary is like a cage. Yeah, you know, it depends on the type of work you are doing. If you are doing you love, you I don't think it's good. We can't see you, we can't see you clearly. Just okay, can you see me now, sir? Okay, yes. Okay, um, to me, I don't think salary it not depend. Okay, you can see salary is a cage, it not depends on the type of work you are doing, it depends on the type of work you are doing. Depends on the type of work you are doing. Because if, if you are doing what you love doing, I don't think you will see salary as a cage. If you are doing what, except probably maybe anyway, Nigeria like this now, most of the times you just tend to accept work, just work, like let me just work, I'm doing something in So maybe, uh, yes, to some method, you can see salary is a cage. But if you are doing something that you love, I don't think it's a cage. You are saying something about where you are present now that people are currently influencing there or so. Yes, they are doing their speech and video, whatever, uploading. They are doing their coverage, both dancers, actors, and all that. Can you turn, can you turn, can you, can you turn, can you flip the camera around? Let's just take a look at this. Let's, let's see some people who are. Okay, I'm coming. And this is reporting live to us from University of Lagos. <laughs> Okay, so some of them actually have left. But let's see if I can still get some of them. So, um, all right, so Teams in Comfort is saying that influencers make a lot of money you know, as long as you have a lot of followership yeah. and you are highly recognized. NS is saying that uh, Teams in Comfort. How many salary <laughs> as a right now? Well, I have a question for Ernest. Ernest, how many influencers uh, are driving Lamborghinis as well? Because I, I, I don't know of. Okay, so we'll quickly cycle through. We'll cycle through the comments. Okay, because it seems that we have quite a couple of uh, motivational speakers in this comment too. So, uh, Ernest is saying that unless you are in for financial security, that's when your salary is okay. But if you're in search for financial independence and freedom. Okay. He also follows up by saying, um, you can't get very, very rich. Okay, I think we've read that. You can't get very rich on salary. It's hard to build your brand. There's a book called Why A Students Work for C Students. Okay. All right. I think you also have um, Chimsy Comfort. You have to come on because I, you, you said I did He already flipped the camera. Okay, he has flipped the camera. Yes. Okay, so let's let's take a look at um, 
his, his video is off. Okay. Okay, so so basically that's that those are like that's like a video of people who are making skits. What you are looking at on the screen right yeah, now. But currently most of them have left. Most of them are left right now. It's just the two people that are here right now. Where are you presently? Are you at the University of Lagos presently? I'm at Newland, I'm at the University of Lagos right now. Newland. Okay, and what are, what, are, what are these people doing? The people that we're watching at the moment, what exactly are they doing? Okay, they are doing a dance kit. A dance kit? Yes, okay. sir. So, I put on TikTok and the other, other social media. Okay, you think that you can respond to this? Bro, I want to say something. No, Brel, Brel was on something. You want to respond to him? Okay, uh, he said those um, dancers are doing skits, right? For how much? Yeah. You dance, you dance, you dance, you, you're collecting 25, 700 naira, 500 naira, for how much? You understand so after dancing all this while you are getting how much so it's, it's, sometimes it's not even worth it you understand because most of these social media platforms they don't even read they don't read some influencers but they don't even like appreciate some influencers if you actually think about it. so it takes a number a number of years sometimes you have to pay money to get money so what is the essence of that you are paying money to do that to just get money me. Yeah, yes, we're, we're with you. Can you hear you? You are, you are, you are, you are trying to influence, but you are paying money, like you are, you are, you are getting sponsored, uh, sponsored as so you can be very popular. And you know the, the do you know the amount of uh, amount of time or, or resources you use in getting there? Like the money that you even spend itself, it's not like a salary for your own self that like you have used to build your, that you can use to build yourself. So what's the essence of influence when I have to pay money for that? And at the end of it, you are just getting how much, because it takes a very long time, very long time for influencing. And there's people that are even influencing. Like you ask them now, they have a 95 more that is just helping them as that is helping them as primary income to what they are doing now. But it don't just come up and you are, you are influencing. You should have a source of income which will be from primary uh, 95. So how why are you not quitting that because of that giving you some amount? <clears throat> To start up something, start up influencing. So it's not even uh, it's not even profitable in the long run to put it there. It's not profitable in the long run. Um. Okay. In some sense, you might say it's not profitable, but it's on, it all depends on the content you're uploading. Yes. And also, concerning the issue of um, pain. So people, if you are a person that network is easy, I don't think you really have issues. That's that's if so people are social, they have the life. Can you can you can you stand such that you are facing the sun because you can't see your face. Your face okay, is very dark. Okay, sir. All right. Okay, so, so it depends okay. on your network. No. So people have a fan and network. They have they know how to connect. So if you have a lot, you have enough to connect with people. You already have a lot of friends. You have the fan base. I don't think influencing will be a difficult thing. So I think anyone that has even want to go into influencing, said, I think the first thing that you need to build on is your network. At least try to get enough network. Build your network. Build your fan base. It's a much more easier. You don't even desire to go into influencing. You have you already have the people on ground. Then looking for a good content, something that will catch their mind that will catch them like give their attention so you can't just also I mean, for someone that wants to go to you have to start look for something that will be catching that will engage them so at least when you're able to so, engage them and sustain them and then so, so, at least i don't think you have much issues the only thing is that it takes time it takes time so I, like i said before i don't think i'll suggest anybody leaving their regular job to do influencing except they already have the network and the fan base, the very skill, everything. And they might have been doing it like once in a while. At least, maybe, like you said, the real thing is that maybe a bad day or something just drop one, drop two, or else, something like that. But aside that, I don't really think so. It's only that easy. 
Okay, so there's somebody responded in a comment. I, I think we had a comment that showed up on the screen, and the comment was uh, NS the same. He said, laugh out loud, bro. 700 500 for now. How much do you think dancers like Okoli and Co make? <laughs> bro, do you want to respond to that? You are saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are saying, how much do you think Okoli and <clears throat> and the rest me please how long have you have really been in that dress like calculate the number of years and calculate the number of years you're working at nine, nine to five are you whining like the number of years that probably have been there you should <laughs> check it back now look at true back and look at the number of years a 95 uh working class person would end so it's 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 it comes a lot of resources to even climb go to that top or even sacrifice to go to that top. So you don't just come up and you want to be an first and you want to start in a, a basic salary inner. Okay, aside from the ones that that are, that are probably doing the lesser <coughs> jobs, basic salary inner should earn probably 400, 500 just to even like for for startup. There are companies that there are much there are much bigger companies that will pay you just for there there even jobs that you have to little little stress more money, but you are dancing five hours more stress more stress little money so it, it's, it still depends though because you cannot just climb up and you want to start making um, do you know do you know the number of years you have to your number of effort or resources or, or time you have to use to get that that uh that um that place so you don't just say because you're ready to you know, do you know how much you need? okay well i agree with you on that yes i agree with you someone that is earning huge amounts yes you are not just the job. but what about a situation whereby someone is not only earning up is the money is even earning is just just let me eat just to manage myself what the person that's what the person do. sorry what, what did you say okay i agree yeah. with you you said um um, they are, they are talking about someone earning good as let's say three figures, seven fifty, five hundred and above. Okay, working in a big company, all that. So, what about situations of people that are uh, earning just okay? Let me just say the amount they are earning is just to sustain themselves and have passion for it. So, you are saying they should not go into it, they should not go into um, influencing, influencing if they have the passion for it. Now, you know, you know, already, already. For what you said, if you have passion for influencing, let's be that. Let's be that. Let's be that. That passion that is driving you forward, that is keeping you forward. You understand? Because if you're not going to, like, from your own words, like you said, if you're not going to influencing if you don't like what you are doing. Sure you get. Okay, so if yes. it's passion that is taking you there, let's be passion. So if you are hungry, you know that it's passion. No? It's not anything. No? Sure you get. So okay. let's just stick there. But um, there's, 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 there's no passion. Well, what yeah? I- can you hear me? I'm hearing you. What, 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 okay, here's the thing. You know these people you are saying, they are probably in um, 700, 500. Okay, according mm. to um, Olari Waji here, he showed us a video of people practicing. The con- they, they want to create content, right, for their TikTok accounts. This is what they are coming up, you get. It means they, they, they already are, yes, now they are coming up. Um, like, you don't get, they are coming up. Yeah, one of them um, in the comments said, "Someone saying it's profitable if you're consistent." No, Osato said, "That's why they have low budget influencers and high budget influencers. This high budget influencers they started somewhere, yeah. So yeah, that's what we are saying. Okay, you you are saying you won't you won't even consider it because you've tried it out and you've seen the downside of it. It wasn't easy, but other people want to continue. Yes, but Olayo Waji didn't tell us if you would actually do it." Will you quit your job or yeah, for you me. get the influence? I won't quit my job. But what will I won't you quit do? my job. What will you do then? Okay, probably I'm not taking it as a side or is it? Hey, hey, uh, that... if, I want to, if I want to consider... Hey, you wouldn't consider it as I... a side or is it? Right, bro? Yeah. Just... And if I want to consider as a side or is it? If I want to consider as a side or is it? I will just go into it while I'm working. I'll be building up my fan base. Maybe once exactly. in a while, maybe one week, two weeks, I might be dropping 
one or two. At least try to get my fan base, build my network. Before I cannot think of maybe later and I want to give back to you. But aside that, I don't think so. Okay, but for right now, I don't think so. Bray, in your opinion, the lady who um last was it last week the news came out, she quit her job and then became a an influencer, but then they chased her out of the house. So what would you say about that one now? You say, hey, I told you so. Why would you quit your job? Yeah, you. Bray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do you know do you remember do you remember she I'm <laughs> saving money? Do you remember she I'm saving money? Maybe she's wise no, now. She's she's back up. What call is it like a ministry who is calling her into it? She now back up, uh, she now back up, she now somewhere she has money somewhere, someone that is pushing us. Why would they get out of her apartment? She wasn't able to pay rent, that's the problem here. She could not pay her rent. Okay. So yeah, that's good, that's good. Okay, so, bro, we yes. say, I don't so, uh-huh. think <laughs> That's good, that's believing in God. That that's just that uh-huh. so that's that just that making a way for you. Yeah. Um, Olayewa, do you see yourself probably in the next um one six months, one year, going into um influencing content creation? Okay, if it's the content creation, but maybe once in a while, because I do it once, you no, know, not every time, but at least I've been doing it once in a while. I mean, the few times I've been online, I do it online. Do not, at mostly on Facebook, all that, but not really. But going to it fully, for now, I don't think so. Because it contains, it entails a lot of time. And then I don't really think I will have that time for that because already I already chose, I already scheduled some of, a lot of stuff that I need to divert my time into right now. So I don't see myself going to it. But if it's that once in a while, it's not being content once in a while, just for the fun part, okay, fine. For the fun part. Not that you're going into it fully or you're quitting anything for it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. personally, yeah. I think this influencing of a thing, eh, it it takes a whole lot. Aside aside you being yes. consistent, you have to there's there are things you need to even create content. You have to talk about lightning, audio, and all. Bro was talking about editing himself, right, bro? So assuming you have like someone to edit it for you now, would that like make you stay? Mm. <laughs> I like you watch laughing. Wait, now, uh, since that, uh, if even if I want to continue that um, podcast, yeah, I only want to be weekly this time. This you time, exactly time. You usually yeah. won't be weekly because you have your nine to nine to five. five yes, yes. yes. Not to be weekly. You know, I said the pressure coming from doing those things was uh, something that uh, discouraging me. Yeah, maintaining the pressure and all that. So I don't want to be it's monthly. Now monthly. Uh, oh, your own is now monthly now. <laughs> <laughs> now monthly, hello, yeah, Now it's foul. After I watch the video, imagine. Imagine. I watch the content. I was so interested, and I'm like, next one, next one, ah. next one. And after everything, one month. One month. Ah. ah. But think about it. Much. Imagine, imagine the fan base you're going to have, like gathering them in a month. I do you know the kind of anticipation you get. <laughs> Not everybody has like, that patience. The suspense is built. Nobody has, not everybody has that patience. <laughs> everybody has that patience. All right. I, so, so I stepped up briefly. I don't know what I missed. I can see that Victor, Victor has joined us. Victor, how are you doing? Can you, the video is too, the video, your, your phones are too close to your faces. All we can just see are your noses and your mustaches. <laughs> I hope you are not looking at Mr. Victor, because you are looking at him. All right. This is not TikTok, it's a professional show. Okay, so you've been following the conversation, right? Can you yeah, of course I have... can take a look at your face? We don't we need to see your full face. All you can just see is your eyes. Okay, I can do this. Okay, so what did I miss out on when I stepped up before? Um, Olaiwaji is saying he, if he's going to consider it, uh, that is, um, bro, he's saying it to be instead of you know, before it was weekly, now he's going to make it monthly. He's going to consider going back to create like a podcast. If, if he considers it, it's going to be like monthly instead of weekly, he use it like a job instead. 
Okay, but the problem is that consistency because effectively you put on a group one month before exactly what Olai Oji was trying to like like who is going to wait because you might post something interesting and people will be like okay they want to see what will happen next and then you're telling them they have to wait one month no one will have that patience okay, okay, so I, okay. if it was a movie now is a different case it's a scenario it's a different because case. we know that okay you can't see your yes. Olai what you can't okay, see, see it now sir can yes, I see it now, sir? Okay, see it was them. a movie. If it was a movie, better. We all know that it takes years, it takes time. But normal content, I don't think anybody, me, I don't think I have that patience to wait for one month for just a... It's not that it's even an option an hour. If it was, okay, let's say I have an hour, okay, I'll now wait for a month. No, 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 no. The reason that will engage me or keep me, that means it will be extra, like, like, I mean, that thing will, it will have a lot of extras, like, it must be really, really loaded. That will make, and I think that will also go for all, all some other people too. Not everybody will have that patience to wait for like a month, except maybe you have, you probably will be engaging them before then, and they already know what you can, what you are, they already know your value. So before you can think of going a month, probably you already be dropping maybe like two, two weeks, two, two weeks. People have already built on the fan base. People already know that this is what this guy wants. This content is, is content are rich. So they can wait for a month to go home because they know your content are really, really worth it. But you have not, I don't think so. You have not yet, the people have not yet known your words. They have not yet known what the richness of your content. And you tell them to wait for one month. I don't think it work out. Okay, so um, we'll, we'll bring Victor back in. Victor, you're back in. Um, Victor, you're back in. We're, we're listening to you. I think Victor has a couple of issues with his... Um... All right, so at this particular point in time, um, we've had a lovely conversation. The conversation has been, should you quit your day job to, um, to become an influencer? And I think that question basically resonates for almost every single thing you would want to do should you quit your day job to become a footballer should you quit your day job to become a wrestler should you quit your day job eh, to become a musician an artist should you quit your day job to become a writer there are lots of things and our own answer is this do not quit your day job unless you have a plan okay because particularly if you are from a region in the world in which you don't have support systems right so do not quit your day job you have to have a plan and a couple of things so we'll quickly go through a couple of things that we discussed before people joined in just a quick summary and then we'll inform you exactly what our next conversation will be like so a couple of things you should keep in mind all right you first should consider it as a side hustle first if you cannot make if you're not making any revenues um influencing as a side hustle then if you go full-time at it there's a very very good chance you will not make you won't, you won't see anything okay I must add something at this point. People do not follow people only for for nothing. Sometimes people follow people for four major reasons. The first reason is they are getting information from the person. This person has like detailed information that is available that is not accessible to other people. Secondly, the second thing, um, the second reason people follow people is education. They are being educated. Okay, perhaps, and, 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 and you have influencers, they will run like educational platforms, they teach people. Okay, people, they teach people physics, mathematics, some of those are core courses. The third reason uh, is entertainment. And that's where you have all these musicians before in the category. The problem with entertainment is that there are lots of people in entertainment. Okay, I have to stress this. The biggest place where you see competition is in entertainment. All right? Because there are lots of people, and that's why you see that on multiple social media platforms, eh, you you see people who they could pop up, they are dancing, they are shaking their body. It's extremely easy to do. All right. Yeah. And the fourth. <laughs> and then the fourth, as uh, like a community that. So you have people who are like community managers. People meet people, they know people. 
if you want to get things done, you can collect them. You get the things done. These are like the four key categories. When we're talking about niching, you have to pick your niche. Where are you going to stand? All right. So, oh, bro, in your own practice, when you when you are when you set up your own um, when you set up your podcast, which of you four did you fall into? Were which? you in, were you informing? Were you educating? Are you entertaining or are you like managing a community? Which of the four categories? Uh, I think it's informing because I don't think I was entertaining because it's more like, uh, okay, the name of the book is like Say Your Mind. So with the, with the title, with the name Say Your Mind, it's trying to say, trying to talk about your experience on societal pressure, on relationships, and peer pressure. So I feel like it's more like informing people on, 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 uh, on, um, on youth in such pressures, you understand? So it's not, it's not like I said, but I'm trying to just to let people be informed that okay, these are the or these are the which both genders in society in the, in the society today. So I feel I fall into the informing aspect. You were saying so you felt you are informing people. Yeah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Because of the name, because of the name, say your mind. It might like say your mind podcast. Okay. So, so those are, so those are, those are a couple of things. Um, is there anything else we want to add before we? Um, yeah. I, I didn't hear you. You don't know what I'm talking, about, Juliet. I think let's just let's read let's read a couple of the. The Let's comments. make a couple of the comments, yes. Okay. Um, we'll talk about what next week, what, what next week holds. Okay. Um, NS, S, um, Z, and we've read that part. Sato is saying that's why there are low budget influencers and high budget influencers. It's profitable if you are consistent and your content is great. Then NS, bro, it's the same number of years, a nine to five for work and highest end end up as a as an HR or manager. It's all about consistency in the fluency field. Then Chimsy Comfort said, you can't just be passion. I, I think, okay. You can't just passion for influencing. You have to build your name. Okay, so at this particular point in time, um, we promise one of the things that we were working on doing is creating um, opportunities for people. And so, and the next part of this particular podcast, we we'll talk about we'll just we'll just talk about a couple of opportunities that will be open up, opening up, um, that are open currently. And then just in case if you, just in case you are interested in them, okay. Some of the, some of those opportunities um, exist for for people who are doing several things. Okay, so we'll talk about um. I just want to pull it up briefly. Why we pull that up briefly? Um, can you talk? Can you inform them about what the what we're working on, the productions we're working on for the next couple of shows? So Juliet is going to talk. So this is the way the conversation is going to go from here. Juliet will talk to us briefly about a couple of productions that we have lined up, the recordings that we have in the month of April. Okay, and then if you if you are interested in being a part of the guests to come in the live studio and all that, she will talk to you about that. We'll talk about the process of how you can reach out and how you can join us. If how you can reach out and join us, basically. But beyond that, also, as soon as Juliet is done, I will be discussing, I will be sharing some opportunities that you should be on the lookout for. Particularly career opportunities, opportunities in the area of influencing. Um, that have been backed by a couple of organizations. So I'll share them with you. I'll share what the process is with you. I'll share what the website you can go to. All right. So at least you can leave you with something, a working plan. Okay, so Juliet, what are we working on? Okay, we have the um, the debate show where we get guests to come on our live studio. So we have um, the opposing and then supporting um, parts. Then we also have um, the dating show where 
singles get to meet and that one is there then we have the live stream that's this too so if you want to reach us you can leave your comments here in the live or join us on tiktok we're on tiktok as the dark Horse show we're on instagram same the dark Horse show we're on rumble we're on t- um, twitter and we're on facebook so you can reach us anywhere okay and then we'll um, schedule you for an appointment with us join us on our live show that's it okay so we like i mentioned we will be sharing a couple of opportunities and there's an opportunity that came to our attention all right so we will be sharing that opportunity right now so if you if you can take a look at your screen um okay so this was um and those people have a bit of interest they have a bit of interest in the media field um, the mtn media innovation program 2024 um, it's a partnership between mtn and uh, the pan-atlantic university the school of media and communication pan-atlantic university and there's a, it's a capacity building program to summarize it's like a six week long program spread across six months for media practitioners in the nigerian space and the good thing about this good thing about this is that if you happen to fall in if you happen to be like um either you have a podcast or you run or you run um, any form of like you have like a platform and all that it's something that we would strongly advise that you consider applying for okay the reason why you i would suggest you apply for this on time because the deadline is april 5th okay it closes on april 5th today is april 2nd so this um it's it's actually it's closing in three days time right one of the things you will need one of the things you will need to apply for this with the media innovation program is to have a valid travel passport for people who have come on our physical show there's something which we we'll say and one of, one of the things i will say for those who come on the physical show is that you always, you always have to prepare for opportunity so if you have a valid passport that means that your passport will not expire within the next um will not expire within the next six months it's still valid for the next six months i want to consider you would ask you to consider taking a look at this okay the training will hold in south africa it's a six weeks training part of it will hold in south africa part of it will hold in nigeria so and it's something which would advise so the link is mtn so i'll put the link in we'll put the link on the screen right now so you can take a look at it right that's for those people who are We have a couple of other opportunities too so we'll put the link on the screen so if you want to apply for that this is the link mtnmip.smc.edu okay the deadline is um deadline is april 5th okay so that's uh, that's few days from now so take a look at it if you are watching this live stream please do not forget to take a screenshot of the screen right now go and take a look at this all right so that one opportunity that currently exists um okay we have a second one also that we'll talk about and i think that that's the that's by providence bank okay we'll put that we'll, again we'll put that on the screen as well just a minute, that's loading. Oh, okay. This is actually closed. Um, so sad, so sad about that. Windows Bank um, opportunity is closed. It was still open as a, as a, it was still open as a yesterday. We were planning for, we were planning for this show. But I think we probably have, we've gotten, we've gotten more applications than we needed to. So. We'll just be on the lookout so on, it's also one of the things that we'll be doing on a weekly basis we will be going through opportunities that exist and then we'll be sharing them with you okay so if you are just joining the live stream right now one of the things we mentioned much earlier is that pan-atlantic university 
alongside with um, from Atlantic University alongside with uh, MTN in Nigeria is hosting the MTN Media Innovation Program. It is a certificate course run by the School of Media and Communication at Atlantic University with a focus on the convergence between ICT and the media. Okay. Wait, just a minute. Focus between ICT and the media. Right? The, what, where does he apply to you? This is where he applies to you. MIP is going to be a fellowship for journalists and media practitioners, practitioners across the entire spectrum, including social media. And it is designed to help them build capacity at both professional and business levels and to deliver over a six month period as a certificate course. Okay. Of this six month period, there will be a six weeks training period that will hold in South Africa outside Nigeria. Great opportunity if you have interest in if you have interest in podcasting, if you have interest in social media, I want to call contact. I would I probably would personally and for the organization will advise that it's something which you should consider applying for. And once you apply for it, please let us know. Uh, let us know how you go, how you fare in the application. Over the course of the next next week, what I will discuss next week, we have a couple of questions we we'll want to discuss next week. Um, let me just let's just quickly pull it up. Okay, so next week, unlike what we have done previously, next week we will we'll spend next week discussing a lot of. We'll, we'll allow people to come into the next week's stats. And then you share your experiences. So next week we'll be discussing purely should you marry this person? Okay. And so that means that if you find if you have anybody in your life who is at that common job, they are faced with the dilemma. And why why are we having this? A couple of weeks back, uh, we had a particular show on on um, we had a particular show on medical compatibility yes. and as a result of the show we got feedback that some people who watch the show who are as who are dating as people are to end relationships we got that feedback okay um so we are asking we are having next week tuesday we'll be asking the question should you marry this person and if you have anybody because sometimes people will not want to take advice from you so if you're watching this perhaps you have somebody in your life maybe like a friend a colleague a younger brother who is dating somebody and you are certain but that person they are dating is either bad for them or maybe they have somebody in the friend zone that they are not paying attention to and you are certain that that person should you are certain that that person should be someone who you should consider going out with and dating and all that just send them away tell them to log on connect for next week's live stream and then we'll listen to them so it's, it's going to be for next week's live stream you will be joining us you will be listening you, you will be talking to us rather we will be listening and we'll be asking questions questions to help you determine whether the person you are dating the person you are with whether there are any barriers and there are lots of barriers there are financial barriers there are medical barriers there are family barriers okay there are also barriers educational barriers meaning that some people cannot get married because they don't have enough money to start families and then if you're a woman you are hanging out with those people you probably are afraid to either break up with them or you don't know how to assess and that's what we'll be discussing next week okay so Please uh, bring your friends, your family. Um, let's let's do some good for the world. Okay. So today, what have we done today? A quick recap, the final recap, and all that. Today we spoke about should you quit your day job to become an influencer, and a couple of interesting things came out. <clears throat> the first thing that came out was that you should first consider um, it as a side also. First, all right. What yes. next? The niche. Consider the niche, uniqueness, <coughs> the um, authenticity. Let's consider the engagement to how you engage with your community. You have to be consistent too. Then your status too. Let's consider that part. Then you have to consider also the day to day expenses. Then be ready to do what the ad works because <coughs> it involves lots of work. So you have to be ready. Mm. 
okay and then bro who has been through who has been on air throughout the chat told us that he suspended his podcast because the stress was too much okay and so we'll be giving a five we said we'll give a 5k cash prize for 20 gig data for most engaging guests okay all right um and then we we'll spoke about an opportunity that was in december at april 5th you should go check it out mtn has the um, a media innovation program that's holding that is closing that involves six months of training you travel to south africa it's closing in three days time go check it out okay and then next week we'll be discussing should you marry this person so we have 5k cash price for 20 big data for most engaging guests okay so how do we go about um allocating that now so we'll do what we did last week so we're gonna ask bro bro let's bring you on we should get the we should get the cash price for today's uh, podcast for today's um, engagement uh, I I think I should get the cash price. <laughs> the oh, you you wow. you are, you can relate, Abby. Because why why uh, why why why, why do you shut, laugh laughing? <laughs> you know I I I think it's that from my own experience, one I really I, I have an experience that's one, and from my experience I really start downside from it, and like it's more like a practical illustration to what I even mentioned. It. And also, I I made like points to why you should not even go into uh, um, influencing because I guess there's a particular point that I made which was um platform dependency. You know, TikTok if if it should go down or the policy changes, it also affects you. So that's something that one should keep in mind. As I said, uh, I should. This time I feel. I, I feel I am. I. I, I, I should. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you agree with him? Do I? Do you agree with him? Yes. You agree. I agree. You think yeah. Brad felt... he, okay, so we we'll just. Came up with experience. Yes, yeah. Well, he came up with quite quite some experience. So we'll do some. We'll do something for you today. Um, we're going to give you the right to um to pick first. So we have two prizes. We have five k cash prize. Um, that's 5k that we give to your account, but we have about 20 gig data. Okay, we'll say about 20 gig data, depending on the network. If your network supports 20 gig data, we'll send it not, we we'll send less. So, we have so which of the two would you prefer? We agree with you, bro. You should be, you should be, you should be today's uh um, prize winner. So, which of these should you prefer? Which would you prefer, bro? You have to make up your mind quickly before we close the show. Oh, uh, 5k is fine. Thank you. We prefer the cash. <laughs> you don't want data. No. You don't want data to do your influencing work. <laughs> um, that's that's <laughs> more reason why. More reason why I said thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna ask a question for those people who are in the and and Jim is saying that why would you get the cash prize? Your points are not that valid now. Okay. <laughs> You All right. Somebody... Can I talk? Yes, yes, we're listening to you. Okay, she said my point are not that valid. Maybe she yes. didn't get the headline of my point. My point, I said number one, I said uh, maintaining uh, pressure, maintaining uh, social media pressure. And that, like, when I said, I said um, uh, platform dependence. And I also made uh, I, I also made reference to my experience on uh, on influencing, which is podcasting, and how I was trying to um, how I was trying to multitask, but due to the pressure and all that, I wasn't able to do so. So, from my own experience, something that anyone can relate to in that particular field, because. Or like okay. you having a whole uh, staff and just a person trying to do podcasting, I don't think it's something that oh, it's as, I, I don't think it's something that anyone can just do just by yourself, editing, uploading, and all that. I think people are attacking you. 
<laughs> okay, right. okay. All right, so you Shut- know what we'll do? We'll do in the spirit so that we don't, so that we don't drag this on and on. What we're going to do is this: we definitely you get you will be a prize winner for today for the cash prize. Okay, so we're going, we're, we're going to have a dilemma now. So do we give the second? Do we give the data to the second conversant, or the data go to the comment section? So with the people in comment section, let let's know: should the data go to Olari Waju or should it come to me? The most engaging person in the comment section. I guess that's 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 the only one you can also vote on. <laughs> Me, I'll be selfish, I'll see myself. Anthony says that uh, you want yourself, Abby. Okay, everybody else, let's 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 make it it's going. We have we have we have 15 seconds to make up our minds. If there's anybody opposed the comment section to Olari, why are you getting the 20 gig data? Please speak now. Within the next 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Oh. Okay, so someone says that uh, one spy says that Alari, why you should get it? We're able to give us live content creators. Alright. That's good. Alright, so those are our so our prize winners for today are who exactly our prize winner for today? Our prize winner for today are Brel and Alan Wadu. It's great having you guys on. Thank you very much. It made the conversation exciting, interesting, and we're able to give us insights. If we'll do more of this. Um, so if you have any, if you if if you have anything that if you particularly need help with so you are prize winners well you are prize winners all right so you get in contact with you get in contact with juliet okay juliet who this is juliet all right so you get in contact with juliet all right on the lobby if you're on the, if you're on the lobby in this video, there will be a WhatsApp link in this video. Log on to the WhatsApp link in the video and ask for Juliet. Juliet to, Juliet to talk to you and then you send your account number and uh, your account number, your phone number, and your phone number exactly. Or and the person who won the, the cash prize and the person who got the gift card. So it's good having you guys on. Um, we will do this. We're going to do this every single week. Anthony is saying that network was bad, but I don't go bad. But let, but let Brennan, let them enjoy it. Enjoy it while you laugh, while you guys are while you are early to it. Okay, once you start having a hundred people turn up on the live stream, eh, it's going to be more competitive. Okay. Meanwhile, invite your friends and family. Um, join us to make this successful. Today we spoke about um, should you quit your day job. So I guess we should talk. Those of us who are running the show right now, we can't quit our day jobs to become full time content creators because. You have to consider the cost of keeping things running. Yes. Um, so that's that. So see you next week. Follow us on that portion on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, and Rumble. Okay. If you need help with personal issues, send an email to advice at dark show, advice at dark Okay. If you need if you need help with personal issues, relationship issues, send an email to. Um, an email to advice at darkpaw.com okay every single week in the month of april we'll be giving out 5k cash prize or 20 or 20 gig data for the most engaging guests so please come next week let's talk to you let's have conversations um if you still if you have the time and you have value passports please go to the mtnmip.smc.edu.nz apply Okay, for the program, it's a six month training program for media practitioners with six weeks uh, travel opportunity in South Africa. So if you have a valid passport, I think you should apply for this. But for next week, again, we'll be discussing um, what, what's next week's date? Should we marry this person? Next week, that should be next week, 19th, right? Right. That's on the 9th. 
9th of April, yes. So ni- next week, 9th of April, we're asking the question, should you marry this person? If you have people who are, if you have people who, family members, friends, who are addicted to somebody that you absolutely detest, send them to the like, send them to the live stream. Let's, let's talk sense into their head. This is going to be back and forth conversation. It's great having you guys on. It's great. As always, thank you very much for being a part of our community. Brel, you are awesome. Honda Alain Waji, you are awesome. Um, Lois, sorry you could not connect. Your audio was terrible, but you are awesome. NS, yeah. it's great to have you on. Gypsy Comfort, thanks for engagement on the comment section. Osato, good engagement. Anthony Uchechuko, it was great having you as well. Um, Fun Splash, good having you in the comment section. Julia has been it's been lovely co hosting this with me, even though <laughs> even though it was not noticed. Then finally to the to the to the crew. Alright? The crew. Peter and Ulua Paul. Um Sheets too. Lawal. Adam. It's great having you guys on. You are reporting back to work <laughs> next week. Our production team is on me this week, so everybody's having a good time. So just while you're enjoying this and watching this from wherever you are, just remember we'll work start starts next week. week. Okay, so with that, it's been a good opportunity. Thank you very much. So we'll, we'll talk to you guys. We'll see you on the next one. I found cause to worry about young men. Most young men are single. Most young women are not.